You're listening to the Am Writing Fantasy Podcast. In today's publishing landscape, you can reach fans all over the world. Query letters are a thing of the past. You don't even need a literary agent. There is nothing standing in the way of making a living from writing. Join two best-selling authors who have self-published more than 20 books between them. Now, on to the show with your hosts, Autumn Burt and Jasper Schmidt. Hello, I'm Jesper. And I'm Autumn. This is episode 94 of the Am Writing Fantasy podcast. And you know, Autumn, after last week's episode where we discussed the common writing advice we hate the most, the irony, is, irony here is not quite lost on me that we today are going to share writing advice on which word not to start sentences with. True. But it's not typical writing advice. I like this topic because it, it's been in the queue for a very long time. One, it, it's one of the ones that came with you when we formed the partnership. And I've always been curious about what this word is. For so what is that? <laughs> two, three years, I've been like, I wonder what the word is that you shouldn't start sentences. And I found it. And I can't wait to share it with people. So, But that's not what we're going to talk about first. No? I, uh, well, I almost wanted to know now. Oh, you're going to have to wait. We're not there yet oh. because uh, you teased me before we started that you have some news. And so you got to fess up now. Okay. Yeah, we <laughs> finally, finally have some news uh, around the house sale. Uh-huh. Yeah. So the, the couple who uh, were who made this conditional purchase contract on our house that still had to sell their own apartment that yeah. I've talked about episodes they have finally sold their apartment now oh my god so this is a real like contract sale now well yeah so now we are inside the one week grace period where they are entitled to change their mind and okay. cancel the contract ah. so that's like a, it's like a basic or a standard contract clause okay so I don't think it'll happen, but it's basically for cases like, for example, if the person who now bought their apartment, let's Mm -hmm. say that this person cannot get a loan in the bank, even though they said that they could, for example, then this is the week whereby they have to step out of the contract and say, oh, by the way, we we don't want to do this anyway. And then, of course, everything would stop. Um, But that's basically the only thing that'll stop it now. So if we get to this weekend... And we haven't heard anything until then. Then it's final. All right. And the house is sold. You have to tell me. You can't make me wait for the podcast. That is so mean. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, dear listener. He does this to me too. It's not just you. (laughs) It's not fair. But that's so exciting. I'm keeping my fingers crossed. Okay, so one week more. Um, Hopefully just one week more. I'll keep my fingers crossed. Yeah, basically less than one week, right? Because we're recording this on a Monday. So once we get to Friday evening, if we haven't heard until then, then it's final. And then 18 months of sales process has (sighs) then come to an end. Oh, I I will be on pins and needles all week waiting to hear. You have to let me know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remind um, me if I forget. Okay, I will keep before, considering the time difference, before you go to sleep on Friday, I will send an email saying, hey, you what, what happened? All right. Yeah, indeed, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so basically this deal means that we have to be out. Let's assume that everything goes fine now. Mm-hmm. Uh, so this means that we have to be out of this house by the 1st of January 2021 at the latest. Oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 I gotta tell you because the re, the real estate agent called me when he sort of said that uh, yeah now they sold their apartment and and we are basically entering the the one week grace period here. So when he called me there, he also said, "Hey, do do you think that maybe we could arrange it so that the house is handed over to the new owners, perhaps like?" mid-December or something, because I really don't want to work on the 1st of January. Oh, no. <laughs> that is too funny. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so let's see, fair. let's see. I mean, of course, it, I mean, we, we need to start searching for somewhere, someplace else to live now. Mm-hmm. Um, but of course, if we find something, then as soon as we find something, then basically we can hand over the house if it happens before then. Right. But at least... 
by the 1st of January, we have to be out. So wow. before then, we have to have found something. Yeah, considering the holidays and everything, I'm sure you guys will probably try to be somewhere else so that you're not packing in the middle of Christmas with the kids. That would be rough. I'm sure yeah, as well, much they're I... excited, but still. Yeah, but basically we would like to, you know, the sooner we can find something else and get out of here, the better. Um, so if it's possible to find something within the next months and a half or, or two, then, you know, if, if it's possible to move by the 1st of November, for example, then we'll do so. Uh, but let, let's see how it all pans out. We don't know yet because we're going to start well, we've been on these different wait lists for for places that we can rent uh, for the last one and a half year. Um, but we are on a passive, uh, you know, we're passive on the wait list, meaning that we don't know if there's anything available. And it's not until this coming weekend, once this grace period comes to an end, that I'm going to flip it to active. Mm -hmm. And when I do, then we will... Well, if there's anything available, then we'll be told that, oh, great, there is this you can rent, right? right. But it could also be that there is nothing available, mm. and then we'll have to look around. There. But the real estate agent did promise us that, that they would try to help us find something we could rent, so that they'll, they'll try to post in their network and stuff. Right. Uh, so well, maybe, they would, let's uh, see. Let's... They don't want to work over January 1, that they'll probably try <laughs> really hard to get you somewhere else. Well, oh, yeah, well, at, so at least, of course, the real estate agent have a very good network, right? Yes. So hope, hopefully there will be something <laughs> we can rent somewhere, in, in at least in close proximity to where we eventually want to move as well. We Ideally, we can rent something in the same city that we want to go to. Yeah, so otherwise, it's a bit counterproductive. But yeah. Let's see. <laughs> be, yeah, especially you would want to get all your stuff over there and it'll be so much easier. Especially if you yeah need to store anything yeah. or go access it, it'll be good to be on one spot. Yeah. So that's, uh, yeah, that's enough news for me. <laughs> <laughs> No, all I can How say. How about you? Nothing exciting. I mean, my husband's back. Um, my writing is going well. I've got some graphic design stuff going well. The fall weather has set in, which is it's funny. The yellow leaves are now you know trickling down from the trees and are just. Mm. It's just feeling like fall, so it's so exciting now to see that it's this changing season. So all I can say is things are going good. Knock on wood, and no COVID. Yeah, and uh, but I think there's a lot of well, I guess that's much further south or something. But isn't there some still issues with fires going on in the U.S. or oh, forest yeah. fires or something? Horrible. That's yeah, out west. So we're I'm on the east coast. Oh, uh, okay, but, okay. Yeah. So yeah, two thousand plus miles away. But where my husband was he, when he was traveling, he was you know he was they were getting smog and smoke from the cities or smog and smoke where he was and that was still you know five to six hundred miles away from the fires it's okay it's bad but nothing too close to where i'm at it's on the east coast it's been pretty quiet so far but again knock on wood you never know we're in, we're still in severe drought as well so you never know no, yeah, it was actually pretty sad because uh, one of the one of the podcasts I listened to the one of the hosts explained how his daughter, I think she was five or something like that, uh, and he explained how his daughter thinks that smoky is a weather condition now because when Aww. when they ask when she gets asked how is the weather she just says it's smoky. <laughs> That's pretty sad, right? That is it's really it's funny, sad. but it's uh, it's also sad. Yeah, it's yeah. I we've driven through that area of California right after the Paradise Fire, which was a couple years ago now. And we saw the community that had burned down and we saw people walking up the highway with like, you know, the little wheel bags you'd see at airports. And they're just walking kind of in a daze just north because they've lost everything. That's all they have. And to his, it's one thing to see it on the, hear it on the news, but to have driven through it and to see the lives overturned by it is just so traumatic that yeah yeah i my heart goes out to them but it's such so much going on in this world we uh, we just need an earthquake or a volcano and i think we'll pretty much have fire wind weather where we've got a couple hurricanes coming so yeah that's the next thing earthquake that's my guess uh, that's a way to turn this podcast depressive <laughs> <laughs> we'll try to cheer it up a week on the internet with the am writing fantasy podcast 
This is one of those famous last chance oh, reminders now. That's right. This is our last roundup call that if you want to join us on Patreon, now is the time. There's something special going on over there. Yeah, indeed. And it runs only until the 19th of October. So you better get moving if you want to <laughs> join a very special giveaway that we are offering a golden ticket to our brand new and upcoming world building course. And by the way, I got to say that this course is going to blow your mind. It has everything. <laughs> and I mean everything you can think of when it comes to fantasy world building. So there is a reason why we spent two years building yeah. this course. Yeah, I have to admit, when I was working on those last modules and uploading them, and it's where we got we go beyond all the world building and we get into tying world building and storytelling together and weaving it all into something that is not a an info dump. And I'm like, we covered this too. <laughs> we, <laughs> we just put everything in. Why don't we just throw in the kitchen sink? So it has everything. You you would go from okay, I'm lost in my world building to having a phenomenal world that you know how to tie into your story as well as having developed a phenomenal story along the way. So yeah, it's a one-stop, you know, it's an amazing course. I can't believe it. But it's almost done. So yeah. <laughs> the good news is that the winner of the golden ticket will get access for free as part as an exclusive VIP opening of the course and all of those not included in the VIP opening, well, they will just have to wait longer to get access to the course. Yes, until 2021 probably is when we'll open yeah, it wide. Yeah, it will but be. Yeah. yeah, so this is your only chance to get in on 2020, except for a few invite-only kind of opportunities and this golden yeah. ticket. But since only one person will win the golden ticket, we of course, like we always do, came up with a solution as to how we could reward everyone. We're just too nice. Uh, I don't know. We're just nice. We're not too nice. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> I think. And it's a good. So what we're going to do, we haven't decided yet, have we? It's going to either be a webinar or a pre-recorded course module, because goodness knows we're good at doing those by now. <laughs> yeah. But it's going to be on a totally different way, a different strategy for advertising. And we call it, what, a reader's journey. So... I think this is just really cool because I think the way, and I have to admit, you came up with most of this on your own, but the way you've taken all this information to develop a way of advertising that really kind of draws in a reader and turns them into a fan. And we're going to like do this for the people who join us on Patreon um, for free. It's just, a, well, I guess you have to join Patreon. So that's a, a dollar. That's not a bad deal. No, not at all. <laughs> and of course, all our existing patron supporters, they will get access to this for free as well. And they will also be entered into the golden ticket draw automatically. So everyone who joins us before the 19th of October will be eligible for, for this reward. So you better go and check it out if you're interested. And uh, I think, yeah, as you said, you know, for a dollar a month, that's a pretty good deal. I think so, it'll be uh, exciting. I mean, it's no matter what, whether you just get the webinar or if you actually get the world building course for a dollar, I mean, obviously you can join for five or 10, but a dollar is the starting level. That is pretty gosh darn good. Yeah. And you also get all the other rewards that we offer there. Not to mention that there is there are actually hundreds of dedicated patron posts designed to help you with your author career and your writing that you will get access to as soon as you join there. So if that sounds good, you can just follow the link to Patreon in the show notes. And uh, well, we hope to see you there. Absolutely. And speaking of seeing people, so one of the things we don't talk about much is with the Am Writing Fantasy, when you do join us through the website or pick up something and you get these re these email tips. And I've mentioned before, it's just like, I can't believe we send out some of these email tips like every, maybe once a month about every three weeks they come. But did you see that email from Timo who thanked us, as he said, a million times, thank you for the ideas in this email. Content marketing ideas in between releases is something I've always struggled with, and I wanted to do short stories, flash fiction, but he was never sure what parts of the actual writing experience would be remotely interesting to his readers. So he thanked us for sending along one of our newsletters. And, you know, it's pretty cool when you have a newsletter that gets those kind of responses just for something you give away 
anyway, like every month. So <laughs> I wanted to make sure you had seen it and let the readers know that, hey, you know, we have a pretty awesome newsletter that helps you out and keeps you going monthly. So check it out. And on to today's topic. For the most part today, I think <laughs> I'll let you take the driving seat on this one, Autumn. Uh, often when the th- thoughts that, uh, often when the subject, I, I should say, is, <laughs> is about craft, then you're most of the time the better teacher. So I do have some reflections <laughs> well, prepared you. that I and thoughts that I can supplement with, but uh, I think I'll leave it to you to uh, sort of take us through this uh, topic here. All right. Well, I was laughing because I, I want to know how you manage this. This is two episodes in a row. I did homework and we haven't hit episode 100 what? yet. So I don't know <laughs> what's going on here. You figured out how to make me do homework and, and I don't know. I'm, I'm usually the one who wings it and I came prepared today. So <laughs> Well, you weren't supposed to figure out. <laughs> <laughs> you, you developed the strategy to get yeah. me to do homework. <laughs> That was not nice. Maybe it's because I finished the world building course and I have more free time. And so maybe, you know, that other side, the, the, the good student side is coming back out after 20 some years. <laughs> <laughs> maybe that's it. Yeah, maybe. But yeah, so you, like I mentioned at the top of the episode, you had had this topic since we decided to combine ideas and we developed a YouTube channel and build on the platform you had already developed with Vain of Fantasy and we created the YouTube channel. And so this... I don't know how long this one's been sitting in your idea list. Probably two been, years. Yeah, I was going to say, it's been at least two years. But you had this topic that is stop st- set, starting sentences with this word. And that's just the nature of curiosity with me. I'm like, I wonder what that word is. What should you yeah. stop starting sentences? <laughs> yeah, the funny thing is when I, when I added that topic into the list of ideas that we could uh, record a podcast about, mm-hmm. I have no idea what that word is. <laughs> <You just laughs> I just put that in there. <laughs> and we weren't even working together at the time. And lo and behold, you know, two years later, it's finally going to happen. And I found that word because, it, like you know, I'm also an editor and a writing coach. Mm-hmm. On I would say on the side, but I've got so many sides going that I've got to be an octagonal dice or something <laughs> to say it's on the side anymore. But yeah, I finally was sitting, what it was a week or so ago, when we were deciding topics for the month, and I said, I know what that word is. Gosh darn it, I know what it is. So we can finally have this podcast, and I'm so excited. So do you want to know what the secret word is that you have to stop starting sentences with this word? Yeah, I, I guess uh, since I wrote the topic two years ago and I still don't know what it is, I, I guess I should be fairly curious by now. <laughs> okay. Well, hopefully we've drummed up the tension for the listener. But so yes, after, this is consolidated advice after helping many, many novice authors that I realized what the word was. And what I see over and over again with new authors is 90% of the time they are starting sentences with he or she, with a pronoun. Mm. And just don't stop starting 90% of your sentences with this word. And I've got some good reasons and I have an example. So do you want to hear an example written um, this way, and this is no one else's work. I, I wrote this. I was, oh, okay. I was just about to say, hopefully you're not going <laughs> to <No>, hang no. <laughs> somebody out to dry. <laughs> I wrote this, and what's what's sad is I actually had to write with the what the end example we'll share at the end of the episode. I had to start with that one and then backtrack it to do this one because I, I couldn't write this way until I had something else to try to manipulate backwards, so it's kind of sad, <laughs> okay. but... All right, so here's my example. He smelled wood smoke trapped by the trees. He thought it was from the campfire the night before. He realized that the birds had stopped singing. He halted his horse, who snorted and pawed the ground. He wondered what was bothering her. He tried to keep her steady as she moved sideways. He noticed a warm breeze that smelled a bit like sulfur. He realized what it was. He kicked his horse as flames erupted around him and his horse bolted. So, that was nine sentences all of them started with the pronoun All he. A, a lot of he, for sure. A yes. lot of he, especially when you read it. It's one thing to read it on a page, but when you hear it, it really does bring out the pronoun and the he. But yeah. so why do you think this is a problem, especially for a reader? Yeah. 
Well, for one, you know, your eye starts to glaze over that kind of stuff and you, you, you start skipping ahead, you know, and, and you, you, miss, you miss the details and by that, maybe it's not the details in itself that is important, but what is important is that you're not getting immersed into the story and into the text because you start noticing all these he's, you start skipping ahead, oh, there's more and there's more and there's more and it just doesn't become an immersive story. No, it's just, there's something, I tried to, I mean, the sentences are a little varied. I tried to make it more active voice than passive. I tried not to make it bad writing. You know, it's not he was sitting and he was doing this and he was doing that. That was, that's really, you know, make sure you're at least active voice. This was, he halted. So he's doing things, but it still becomes monotonous. It, the tone is monotonous. The, the sentence structure is always the same and you're brain I think just kind of starts going oh my goodness I just need something else something to chew on it's like having the same meal every single day and you just want something different your brain is craving something different so like you mm. said readers will start skipping ahead I know as an editor and I hit passages like this I'm like oh really <laughs> I just I start changing things just because I need to change it as well so uh, that's yeah. the bad. That's why it becomes an issue. Is because it just your readers are not going to see it. And even though you're doing things right with active tone, you know, active verbs, it's still there's no variety there. And you know, readers want a feast. They want a banquet. They don't want you know a ham and cheese sandwich every single day. It just no. You don't you don't come back for that. No, that's right. Yeah, I had the. Uh... I had three different uh, words that I sort of had. I, I tried to think about what word do I think would be the ones that you should stop with. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I agree with your choice more there, but I did have three that uh, I picked. So Ooh, I hear maybe it. I could just share them as well. Uh, yeah. And then you can let me know what you think about them. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, the first one, well, that's of course, if you're writing first person, then... Mm -hmm you're going to use I a lot. Yes, um, that's very true. And I think at least try not to use it at the beginning of every sentence because just like he, basically, it becomes yeah. really annoying. It can't, it's the exact same advice as you're using the, when you start using that same word, it's just, you, that's all you see. And it's, especially with, to me, with I becomes very self-centered. And I start just thinking, oh gosh, this character only ever thinks about themselves. <laughs> and I mean, you're in that point of view, but there's something about it that I just find offensive. So yeah, I have a real, mm. I have, I actually avoid stories in first person because I have a big problem with them, and the eye, the eye is a part of it. Yeah, and my next one, mm -hmm. I think it's more like it's probably more like a question to you uh, if you think it's bad or not. Oh, okay. But uh, yeah, yeah, I noticed that. Uh, here on the podcast, for example, when we record podcasts, I tend to start sentences with the word so a lot. Oh, yeah. It, it just works well as one of those transition words, you know, when we kick off mm -hmm. a new topic. So, <laughs> is <laughs> so a word best avoided at the beginning of sentences, do you think? I think in technical writing, or like when you're writing your novel, you can have it every once in a while because it is a good word and as a speaking pattern so is better than a or um uh those are just really bad filler words but it definitely if you realize that you're writing so like every other word every other sentence to join two sentences or two thoughts together then you need to work on a few other ones but i honestly don't hear you saying that and i do know when i'm writing it is one i have to self-edit out i want to do and so and i'm like okay nope starting the sentence with something else not that again I, I limit myself to how many times i can use so in a in a page because it is it's a good transition word and you just don't want to overuse it hmm. yeah good point <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> so, or, what's, so do you, you have another one <laughs> i do have another one okay uh, the, the third option i prepared Yes, uh, and I actually prepared two example um, quotes Ooh, or sentences excellent. here as well. Excellent, because it's a uh, it's when you start sentences with with <laughs> with with <laughs> with the word with. All right. Um, I, I think that might not always be the best way to start a sentence. Uh, you know, in many cases, the word with mm -hmm. can just be cut, and with it, 
might only require a very minor rewrite to actually make the sentence flow better mm -hmm. without losing its meaning. So I made an example here. Oh, yes. That'd be fantastic. Okay, so here we go. With the Am Writing Fantasy podcast dissing out writing advice, the world has come to an end. <laughs> <laughs> I like your example. <laughs> Versus this sentence. The Am Writing Fantasy podcast dishes out writing advice, has the world come to an end? Yes. And it is the Which second. Which one is better? The second one is so much better. It has more authoritative tone. It's more of a stance. You know, you can feel the stance of it. The other one just that with is weakens the whole entire sentence structure. So it's, it might work in a sentence, like in a paragraph, but if you really want that to be your tagline, your concrete example, you need to get rid of the with. Yeah, yeah, I think I, 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 it says exactly the same thing. Yeah. I just feel like it's much more impactful, the exactly. second one. This, yes, I agree. The second one is much more impactful. Yeah. Okay. So that was my three uh, contributions <laughs> to this conversation. <laughs> well, that's all right. Well, I have some ways to tighten up your writing, especially if you're using pronouns or like he, she, or I, if you're doing this, but it works with everything we've talked about. I mean, another good example, it's not a sentence starter, but that almost every like 90% of the that in your novel, you can go and edit out, but that's later in the sentence. So we're not, we're not focusing on things that are coming later. We're talking about the stuff before the verb. Uh, so if you're using these, some ways of looking at them and tightening up your writing is, you know, tips on what to do. And the first one is, especially when you're using pronouns, the he, she, or I, if you didn't notice in my example, you, you know, it's a guy cause I used he, but you don't know who's talking. You know, use names. <laughs> I, I, especially when you start having several characters, especially several of the same gender. That's one reason I actually chose in this example that the horse was a female because I wanted to throw in a different pronoun. I figured one more he is just going to be way too much in an example that you can't see. I know visually I, I do better. Um, I'm much more visual. So I like to read what I'm talking about. If I heard this on a podcast, I'd be like, can you, can you write that down, please? <laughs> that would be me. <laughs> <laughs> so use names. You need to know when you have especially two male characters or three women or something, you need to know who is who. So you're going to be using first names a lot more frequently than you would use, say, if you were actually talking to somebody. You just have to use the name so you can differentiate. And when you start using like her arm, you know, referring back to the noun or the pronoun later in the sentence. If you don't have some of like Tisha's arm, if you don't throw some of those other clues in there, you might get readers confused about whose arm is where. So <laughs> do keep that in mind and try to read through after you write to make sure that you, your later pronouns and adjectives and stuff are referring to the right person. I see this a lot in writing that you start throwing in he, his, his, and I don't know who's doing what anymore. And it's just a no, it's just a brouhaha. And you just don't want to do that. So use names. You're going to have to use names a lot more. So that's my biggest piece of advice, especially just if I had broken up that, uh, the example with just a name every once in a while, it would have made it much more impactful. All right. So you want to hear advice number two, or do you have anything to say about using a name? No, no, I agree with what you said, so carry on. <laughs> All right. So sentence variation, um, structure as well as length. And that's definitely something when you're always starting a, a pronoun or a noun and then the verb and then, you know, something, some, you know, some phrase. It's all the same sentence structure. It's like I mentioned, it's it's getting that ham and cheese sandwich and you want the feast, you want the banquet, you need to break up things with starter clauses. Just something different questions something that's going to break up that sentence structure make things shorter you know action sentences are so nice when they're snappy and they're short like three three words long that's a fantastic sentence and then vary that with something that's you know 15 words 20 words you set, break it up because readers will speed up and they'll slow down and it's a wonderful way to get through a paragraph and they pay more attention when you start doing things like that so it's a wonderful way to break up the monotony and keep someone's attention so that they're not just starting to glaze over because it's he said something yeah and it's actually also using the sentence well the length of them but the, but the structure of the paragraph to 
increase the momentum and increase the pacing, uh, yes. which is it's a quite well. I don't want. I don't even know <laughs> if I could call it a trick because it's not a trick. It's the way to do it, but it's. Um, it's very good to be mindful about, you know, that, that, for example, if something, if you're in the middle of a fight scene or something, then be mindful that, okay, I'm just going to write a couple of very short, choppy sentences here to basically increase the pace of, of, of what is happening because it, it goes well with, with the action on the page, right? So yeah. I think it's extremely helpful to be mindful about it. And it's so simple but sometimes it's not until somebody tells you about it that you actually start thinking about, oh, yeah, I guess, yeah, that's smart. And then you just start doing it. But, and it makes a, a really big difference. But somebody has to tell you <laughs> to you in the first place. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're telling you now. And it, it, is, yeah, it's, yeah. it is almost like music notes. And they do call it beats. It is a, a type of way of setting the beat or the tone. And, you know, if you have that steady drum you're going to eventually just start ignoring it. But if you start breaking it up, you will definitely hear something different. You'll be more aware. And that's what you are doing with sentence variation. You are setting your beats, you're setting your pace, and you're setting your tone. And it's wonder once you realize that, that this is sort of a composition and a piece of music and you start varying things, yes, I think your writing just kind of perks up that next level and it feels good. All right. Yep. So, Three. yes. All right. My advice number three out of five. Oh, I didn't know what that... And the next one is... You want me to guess? Oh, I shared it with you, so that wouldn't be fair. I, I will admit that. So, I will <laughs> share. All right. So, the third one is dialogue. If you didn't notice this little paragraph example, there was no dialogue. Ah. Dialogue oh, is yeah. a wonderful way to break things up, unless, of course, you're just using he said <laughs> and she said, because that's totally cheating. <laughs> that's just doing the same thing. So use other dialogue tags. You know, we talked about this in the last episode. You know, Fantasy is one of the ones where you can get away with using growled and whispered and shouted. These are wonderful dialogue tags. Technically, they're telling and not showing emotion, but Fantasy, you can get away with it a lot more because the readers, I think, we do see said we want to see nuances like growled or whispered and things. And of course, there's action tags. Action tags are when the character is physically doing something, then you never even said who said it. It's just because with the reader's mind, if you have dialogue in the same sentence with an action, they auto a reader will automatically think that whoever is in that same sentence or line is the same person who's speaking. So it's like, put that away. He said, you know, he put the mug down instead of saying he said that he put to put the mug down. You know, it's by doing the action at the same time and having the the dialogue is the same sentence or not the same sentence, uh, same line of text. The reader will think that it, the person who is doing the action is also the person speaking. And so action tags are a fantastic way of just skipping the whole said growled whispered shouted <laughs> and mm -hmm. breaking that up and having something completely different and it's definitely changing your sentence structure yeah and it's also a nice way of when when we're talking about well starting sentences with with words right this is also a different a nice way to break it up and, and change it out and make sentences start in different ways um you know for example starting because you can also put the action tag in front of the, the, mm -hmm. the dialogue. Um, so that's another way you can sort of break up and start the sentences in a different way. Yes. Uh, just making sure it's, you know, that every paragraph starts differently and yes. not with the same word, but also not in the same way. So yeah. it, it makes a huge difference. Yeah. And that's where it's also so important not to have two people speaking in the same paragraph, you know, do an end break. And next time, you know, as soon as the speaker changes, hit enter and do a new paragraph because it gets confusing if you have too many people talking in the same paragraph and if you're using action tags. But like you said, you know, he walked to the window. When do you think she's coming home? You know it's the same person who just walked to the window. That is just, yeah. it just is the way the weird reader thinks. But again, then if you have someone else talking right after that, you're just lost. So you get confused. Don't do that. 
And I would say one last thing on dialogue, too. It breaks up the text visually. You get a lot more white space. And so that's kind of a nice break in all that prose for the reader as well. So sometimes adding in white space is not a bad thing. No, I would say in most cases it's actually a good thing. Because <laughs> yeah. at, at least as a reader, I know with myself at least, uh, if I if I have to... Well, I always read on the Kindle, right? But every time I change the page on the Kindle, if every single page is just blocks of text, it doesn't take more like three or four pages because I feel like, oh my God, this is, I mean, <laughs> it's just nice to see, oh, a lot of white space. Oh, cool. You know, there's something nice about, I know this this page is going to fly by, you know? Yeah. I don't know why, but it just feels nice to, to it feels like, okay, I'm reading fast. Yeah, well, <laughs> dialogue nice. does read faster. So it's yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. yeah, I agree. It's just, it kind of makes it, it, again, it's a different type of change in the beat, but it's so much, it's so nice to have it. But yeah, if you're if you're reading like those ac academic papers and it's page after page of prose and you're like, oh, you know, you feel like you're just eating heavy carbs. <laughs> yes, I love yeah. food. All my food, all my analogies are food. I love food. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I have dinner right after we record podcasts. So let's just keep that in mind. <laughs> all right. So number four, advice. Are you ready? Yes. All right. Description. I've never been more ready. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Description is okay once in a while. Set the scene. I mentioned in the example, you know, there's a little bit of wood smoke. You it mentions trees and that there had been a campfire the night before, but there really isn't much scene setting. Description, you don't want to do pages. You don't really want to do solid paragraphs of description. But you can set the scene with, you know, a little bit of a description about what maybe the trees looked like or, you know... Why is he riding a horse? What is he carrying with him? Those are fine things to add in. And by doing that, most likely you're going to get rid of the pronoun because you're going to be describing the forest. So that's already something different. So you're breaking it up a little bit. You're going to change up the text. You're going to change up the sentence. And that's exciting. So definitely add in some description. Yeah. I only have one caveat to that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> because I have to. Oh, that's you got it. Yeah, definitely. The only caveat that I would have is that if the sentence that we're talking about right now is the first sentence of the novel, uh, please don't start by describing <laughs> the clouds or how it's raining or something like that. Just, I was going to say the weather. You do not the start, weather. <laughs> yeah. You do not start a novel like that. No, always the best way. You could Even if you start with the pronoun, but if you could start with the main character doing something or saying something is a much better way than saying, you know, the sky looked threatening tonight. <laughs> I just... Yeah, well, there's yeah. been so... I was just about to use a swear word there, but there's <laughs> been so many novels where it yeah. always starts with how how it's it's a lightning or there's a storm or it's mm. raining worse than it has been raining for 200 years or it's like i don't care <laughs> you don't know enough about the place to care about the weather you need to care about the place first to know that it's unusual i agree nope that's a very good caveat i i this is the second bit of episode i totally agree with you so oh, we're good it's amazing you can make a habit out of that i wouldn't mind <laughs> well see you know i'm stubborn so <laughs> <laughs> it's the feisty side all right so we are up to my fifth and final piece of advice of things to do to break up your writing and make it more interesting and that is if you're especially if you're writing in third person this, you should write in something called deep point of view deep pov which when you do that you're it's like writing in first person but you're still using he and she so when you're doing that you actually avoid words like thought or wondered or looked because the character does it it's just like writing in first person so if you would say you don't usually say i thought about this you would just give your thought and that is a different way of writing and by doing that and removing he thought he wondered you drop off that pronoun and you make the sentence much more impactful you just put in the thought you just put in what he sees and that will totally change up your writing tone and make it much more interesting and also draws a connection deeper almost like you're writing in first person so that'll really connect better with the reader they will sync a lot better with the character and if you want a fantastic example of this 
just pick up uh, George R. R. Martin because he he is a master of deep POV. And when you pick up one chapter and you switch to a different chapter, his tone and his writing style completely changes to fit that character and the way that character sees and thinks. And even the metaphors and the analogies that that character will think of. And it's just, when you do that, that level, it is fantastic writing. So fantastic, you know, really good example, better than my example, but <laughs> I, you know, I was just doing it for the podcast. We weren't going to go that deeply, but that is definitely my final one. You know, if you don't know what deep POV is, you know, put it in the comments and we can try to describe that better. We can link you to some blog posts or we could, I don't know, we could do a whole podcast on deep POV. If people want to just let us know. Yeah. 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 I, I do find it important that, you know, that your sentences start strong and mm -hmm. also finish strong. I mean, yeah. perhaps they have to finish even stronger than they started. But I think for me, about all that we've talked about in this episode, I would almost say that the real trick isn't so much about which words to avoid. I, I do agree with, with the examples that you've given us here and, and your point about starting with he or she all the time. I, I do agree with that. But but I think that the real trick isn't that much about what to avoid, but it's much more about understanding the structure of sentences and paragraphs and making sure that you use a varied way of writing so that it doesn't become monotonous and you just sit there and, and it's the same and the same and the same, right? Uh, I think that is really the main takeaway mm -hmm. more than it is to avoid a specific word. I agree. I think that is definitely the main takeaway. I mean, if you need to, if it's the only way you can write fine, but then you're going to have to spend some time editing to break up your prose and your sentences. And I do have, so do you want to hear the example before we wrap up? So I, I used yep. all the advice. You know, you, I will skip. If you need to know what it is, you'll have to zoom back in the podcast. So I'm not going to reread that first one. That's all he's. It's horrible. But the exact same idea rewritten to break it up a little bit. Rohan yep. smelled wood smoke lingering under the dense tree canopy from the campfire the night before. But the birds had gone silent. He reined in his snorting horse. Petting the horse's neck as she pawed the ground, he whispered, What's bothering you, old girl? The horse kept her ears pinned back as she sidled sideways. A warm wind brushed against the back of his neck. It held a hint of sulfur. Rohan went rigid in his saddle. Under his arm, his mare re reared. She bolted as trees ignited to their right and the hidden dragon roared. So we went from nine sentences to ten. Only one starts with he and two with the character's name. And I don't know about you, but I, I would much rather read the second one than the first one. Yeah, uh, it's a million times better, obviously. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, very good. I think uh, there's some good takeaways here. Um, Despite our previous episode on bad writing advice, um, this was hopefully writing advice you find useful. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if it's common writing advice. So as long as we can claim that it's not common, then uh, yeah, I go. think we'll be good. <laughs> All right. I will go with that. <laughs> okay, so next Monday, we plan to speak to you about a brand new way you can think about your author website, but I'll leave it a bit cryptic for now. If you like what you just heard, there's a few things you can do to support the Am Writing Fantasy Podcast. Please tell a fellow author about the show and visit us at Apple Podcast and leave a rating and review. You can also join Autumn and Jasper on Patreon.com slash AmWritingFantasy. For as little as a dollar a month, you'll get awesome rewards and keep the Am Writing Fantasy Podcast going. Stay safe out there and see you next Monday. <laughs>